What up, what up, what up? What up, everybody? It's your girl, Marquita, but they like to call me Who Miss Hollywood, and you're tuned into another episode of So Hollywood, the podcast. Is it me or was it hiding here? Is it me or was it hiding here? It's your girl, Marquita, but they like to call me Who Miss Hollywood, and you're tuned into yet another episode of So Hollywood, the podcast. So Hollywood, the podcast is a platform where everyone is treated equally, and I bring them together with this thing called entertainment, as you guys know. And if you don't know, I like to do a mini recap, which is, um, I'll tell you a little bit about my latest episode, in which you can see it on my Instagram page, and then I'm also going to have a rebranding here shortly, probably April, the end of April, Maybe May. It just depends on um, how I'm feeling. But I had a gentleman by the name of TK Ruler. He has a new album out called Sad Boy, Bad Boy on all digital and all streaming and p- streaming platforms. He performed um, on Welcome to the Limelight, which is a new segment, which I was telling you guys earlier that I have here on the show. Um, so Hollywood, the podcast. And you can follow him on Instagram, TK Ruler, R U L E R. Catch the latest episode of So Hollywood, the podcast on my Instagram page, as well as all digital streaming platforms. If you'd like to be a guest, go to www.allofhollywood.biz. Um, and without further ado, <laughs> We are going to give him his flowers before I bring him up. He is the co-founder of FUBU Collection, CEO of FUBU Radio, New York representer celebrating 30 years of FUBU, y'all. How ironic. All the, Out of all the interviews, this is like one of, one of my most important ones because it is for the culture in which all of what I do is for the culture in this thing called entertainment. He is a fellow Scorpio and come to find out his birthday, we have the same birthday. My birthday is October 24th and his is October 24th. It's crazy. And last but not least, he is the brand manager of Shark Group and he's a public speaker. We have Keith her parin I, I always i always be getting getting it messed up how you doing today uh we're gonna bring him up he coming he coming he coming y'all <laughs> there we go <laughs> i'll be messing up names and i'm like you know i'm like noriega i'm dyslexic a little bit but it's all it's all good it's parin, it's parin. <laughs> so how are you doing this evening I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I was just running around trying to get back before we started this. So I made it. I, I appreciate you for even sliding through my podcast. Um, I've had a lot of phenomenal guests, but um, you are definitely one of the ones that I wanted to talk to in a, for the longest. And because you've, you have so mi- so much tied into this thing called entertainment. And so I really appreciate you for joining me on So Hollywood, the podcast. Um, so let's get this interview started. Um, how did this thing called entertainment enter your life? Uh, man. So, um, I guess back in the days when, you know, we grew up in Hollis, Queens, Queens village, Shadyville area. Um, so, you know, growing up in that area, we had artists like Run DMC, LL Cool J, um, Song Pepper, Rakim, Q-Tip, Tribe Called Quest. So, you know, all these, all of these people were, um, you know, were in our neighborhood and we grew up with them. So that's kind of how it all first started. And plus hip hop was just, you know, just coming into fruition for us in, in our area. Um, you know, it started in the Bronx, but, mm-hmm. you know, we kind of took that, took that and ran with it once it came to Queens. But, um, you know, just growing up around that and, and, you know, actually getting into, you know, relationships with Damon and them and, uh, you know, going on tour with LL Cool J back in the days and just getting, you know, getting involved with all of that. That's kind of how the, the bug came about. Mm, okay. So talk about what the scene was like growing up and where you're from. You said you're originally from New York, Queens? Mm-hmm. Queens, New York. Okay. Yep. So talk about like how the entertainment aspect kind of um, surrounded you when you were growing up in Queens. Um. You know, back in back in those days, you had you know, you had a few people. You had the the entrepreneurs such as Russell Simmons and LL Cool J's and whatnot. Then you also had the 
you know, the Supreme team, the fat cats and all that. So as a young kid trying to grow up and figure out what you wanted to do, it was easy to go either way, right. you know, and for fortunately for us, we went the right way. But, you know, I remember, you know, being young, not able to get in the club, but being in the club and looking at the guys on the stage with all the money and the jewelry and all that stuff. And I'm like, man, you know, but they obviously sold drugs. So, mm-hmm. you know, um, wasn't really trying to go down that route. I tried it for about two weeks and figured it out. It wasn't my, <laughs> it wasn't for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but, you know, the entertainment thing, you know, we used to, like I said, I was, I think I, I went on the road at um, 15 and I never really been anywhere. What? Um, I never really been anywhere out of state. And my mother, you know, being that, you know, me and Damon and everybody was so cool and call and it was so cool that, you know, she let me go. And she was like, well, how much you need? And Damon was like, you only need about $50. And I'm like, $50? <laughs> Like, yeah, because we're going we gonna to pool our money together. We're going to pay for the room. We're going to sleep. Everybody's going to sleep in one room. And then for money for gas and a couple of dollars to get something to eat. You're only going for, you know, one one day. Right. So um, so that was kind of that was kind of it. When I, once I went to that first concert, I was I was open. And you you all like y'all grew up together. You, Damon, Jay Alexander and Carlton. Did y'all all grow up together? Yeah, well, Carl, Carl and Jay, they grew up with Damon. Um, you know, they were neighbors and, and, you know, they lived not too far. Jay, I think Jay lived like two or three blocks from, from them. But Carl lived a couple of doors down from, from Damon. So they met when I think they were like six. And then Jay okay. came around seven or eight or something like that. Okay. Um, I didn't meet those guys until I was around 15. Because okay. um, we wound up, I wound up going to Bayside High School. My mom didn't want me to go to. Andrew Jackson, where every where, where everybody I knew was going, she didn't want me to go there. So, you know, she felt like I would have a better chance in Bayside, and I think she was absolutely right because school wasn't really it for me back then. I didn't really, I, I was a smart smart dude, but for some reason, I think just the things that I was going through in, in my life at that time was was distracting me, and I was just frustrated as a young black man. Um, but yeah, so I met them in um in high school. In a co-op program, and that's how we all met. Wow! Did you did you attend college, or did you pursue any anything like further education after you graduated high school? No, no, I was absolutely dead broke. Moms was dead broke, so I wasn't, you know. And I knew a couple of cats that was going to school and how they were struggling and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, I didn't have eighteen years of struggle. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> right. I want I want to see what it is to, to have a couple of dollars in my pocket, and and then you know. So I just I I wind up getting a um a, a job when in the co-op program for um uh HUD. So I worked okay. for the Housing and Urban Development and I got that job when I was like 18. Yeah, 17, 18. And then um I worked there for about a year and a half. And then um I actually went over to um to the private sector and I started working in um this com- working for this company called NHP National Housing Partnership. Where I became, you know, I think in the first year and a half, I got three, three promotions. And then uh-huh. my fourth promotion was a uh, property manager. So I got my property manager job and I was going on 21. So mm. that was it. So you had, you played a big role in the business aspect of when it came to like FUBU because um, you, you started there and then you shortly after moved towards FUBU, which came in to pu- came into play in like 92, correct? Yeah. Around yeah. Well, I was actually doing, we were actually doing both. Like I would go to work okay. and we'll come home and I was, you know, I, I couldn't put in as much time as these guys. Cause a lot of them quit their job. And I know Damon was like, we need to quit our job and <laughs> you know, put this time. And I'm right. like, man, I got a daughter. I got to pay for, you know, I got to make sure she's straight. So I can't really, I can't really just quit my job. Plus I didn't have a job. I had more, more of a, less a career. You know right. what I mean? I was right. trying to really, you know, go up the, up the ladder in that, in that um, company, you know, and I, I saw myself moving qu- pretty quickly actually going up there. So, um, but yeah, I, I think, um, you know, just doing both of those at the same time and then actually coming to, I think it was like four, four and a half years later, then we all decided, okay, we, we got to quit our jobs and, and, and do this. And even then I didn't quit. I wound up getting fired. So I can, <laughs> so you can draw that unemployment. <laughs> You know, <laughs> that's the smartest shit ever. 
that, that couldn't do it because you know I was uh, we weren't really making any money yet. Right. So you know we were just taking the money, putting it back into the business. So I wasn't getting no paychecks or nothing from that. So I couldn't just. And then I had one of those, um, you know, either you pay or I'm taking you to court. Right. Money. So oh. That's what I had to do. Oh. So you were dealing with a lot of a lot of things behind the scenes, so to speak. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, how did your life change soon after you quit your job and soon after FUBU became the prominent role in your life? So how did my life change? Uh, my life changed dramatically. I mean, you know, you're talking about a kid who had the most money in his account was uh income tax time so if i was able mm. to get three four thousand dollars in my account at income tax time i was balling you know you couldn't tell me nothing i would get a whole i would get about 500 singles and in about a hundred and a hundred dollars worth of 20s and put it in my pocket you couldn't tell me nothing i thought i had a whole lot of money but you know when i finally was able to get you know some checks coming in, it, it changed everything dramatically. Cause I always promised my mom, I said, yo, when I, when I grew up, I'm by your house. And, you know, during my life, I was, I wasn't always on the right, right path. So she was like, well, how you going, how you going to get your, you know, give me a house if you can't even, you know, stay out of trouble or, right. or, you know, you don't even know what job you're going to get to buy me this house. And, um, so when I first got that first check, that was one of the first things I did was buy a house. So mm, that was that soon after, or was that like you said? I was uh, I bought a house in '98, so we got the deal okay. in '96. Um, okay. First year, you know, we was trying to figure out the the you know the pay scale and how everybody was getting, you know, and what they was getting, and then you know once we figured that out, because um, we used to get pay and distribution. So once we got that distribution. You know, it was shit. I think I think my distribution was a little more over half a mil. So wow. I was um I was good at that point, you know. Right. And then it was crazy because you can spend money and and your bank account don't move. Like I spent my mom's. I think I put a down payment of like sixty on a house, and then um I bought me a couple of things. <laughs> um, I bought me a, a whip. <laughs> You know, I actually, actually did the dumbest thing in the world. I, I leased a whip and put like fifty thousand in it, and then um, <laughs> and then I decided three years later I didn't want the whip no more because I was, you know, I was on this level where I was like, I don't want that old, you know, right. yeah, I want something new. Right. So I took, uh, I put forty thousand in it. I took ten thousand to turn it back to factory, and then I gave it back. And I think that was one of the most dumbest decisions I ever made in my life. It was like. Bro, you should have just bought the car. You she right. all the time. You just bought the car and kept the car, but I didn't do that. <laughs> it's all good. And as long as you've learned your lesson now. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, talk about the sacrifices that you had to en- endure when you you were going through the process of making FUBU a household name. Uh, man, it was, it was a lot of sacrifices. Like, you know, you, you don't realize that, you know, they always say you lose your first wife to the business because mm. you know, once you, once you get in there and you start working, you can't stop working. You got to keep going. And then what happens is that changes the, the dynamic in your relationship. And then all of a sudden you're not there anymore. You're not around anymore. You know, all you're doing is worrying about the business. But I think what I did was even though I worried about the business, you know, a lot, I also worried about my relationship. So I met my wife when I was uh, 25 and, um, you know, we've been rocking 26 years now. You know what I mean? Wow, she, congratulations. She able, yeah. She was able to, uh, you know, withstand the, the, <laughs> the rigor, the rigor memorial, <laughs> whatever you call it. You know what I mean? Like, right. it, it was, it was a little crazy, but she, you know, she, she held in there and then I always thought, and always tried to make time for her and do things with her so that she wouldn't feel left out. But, you know, you miss out on a lot. You miss a lot of birthday parties, you know, especially I got a big family. So I'm, I'm into my family and we all, we all vibe, you know, we all love getting together and whatnot. So sometimes you're missing people's, you know, birthdays and weddings and, you know, yeah. all kind of stuff. You just, you just miss out. But, you know, I, when I look back on it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really change it for the world because, you know, 
it taught me how to how to go get it. You know what I mean? Right. Like you have to sacrifice. And my mother used to always tell me all the time when I was young, you have to sacrifice to to get to the next level. You always gonna have to sacrifice something. And and I really understood that once I went through that. So that yeah. was that was a big uh you know there was a big you know you also lose a lot of friends you know what yes, I mean because a lot of a lot of your friends think that oh you fly now you know what I'm saying like yeah. oh you fly you ain't got no time for the little people it's, they don't understand it's not that you fly it's that you know your schedule is now different you know right. um but I've always been one that like and I think that's what really kept me in the in the mix with a lot of my peoples because I was never like one of those dudes that, you know, flew by you and blew the horn, like beep beep, right. threw my hand up through the sunroof right. and all that. Like, if I see you and I know you, I don't care where I know you from. Like, if, we, if you know me, I'll stop and be like, hey, what's up? What's good? Like, you know what I mean? Right. Even if it's for five seconds, five minutes, or whatever it is, and, and just show some love, you know what I mean? And, or even, you know, pull over and, and somebody like, yo, where you going? I'm like, I'm over here. Damn, I was gonna go over here. I was gonna jump on the van. All right, come on, let's go. Boom, and I'll drop them off or something. But that goes a long way, you know. And um, it's funny because my man told me the other day because I'm trying to, I'm gonna get ready to work on um getting out there doing some public speaking. Okay. So he said, you know, you was Cardi B before Cardi B. I said, <laughs> what you talk about? He was like, man, you've been keeping it real since man since you was young, bro. Like before all this even started, you was real. So you know, you always been yourself and it's cool. Cause I don't know who else to be really, you know what I mean? At this right, point. Right. So. And do you think that helped you longevity wise with, with, with you as a person as well as with you as a brand? Yeah, I think so. Because I wind up being the people's person. So in the group, like, you know, some of my guys are more standoffish. Some of them are cool. They don't really know you like that. They don't rock with you, mm-hmm. you know, and I was kind of like the icebreaker. Like I would go on, cause I used to do product placement. I still do actually product placement. It's crazy because of the relationship that I have. Right. But um, but I do um I do know that, you know, me going on video sets and trying to figure it out and trying to see who's who and then talk to, you know, certain people and then just the way I was, I don't know, a very approachable or whatever it is, I just was able just to just you. you know. Yeah, I just was able to just get in there and, and and make it work. And um, and you know, it, it's funny because uh, I want to say this, this is the craziest story. Um, one time me and Damon got into an argument, <laughs> and he was like, he was like, anybody could do your job. And I was like, really? I said, uh, uh, I said, okay, well, it, it ain't that easy, bro. Like, it's, it's not easy. And he was like, all you doing is giving out clothes that people want. That is what they. You know what I'm saying? Like, who ain't going to want the clothes? I said, bro, it's not that easy. Mm-hmm. So he was like, all right, I'm going to show you how easy it is. I'm going to give Will your job. And so I said, okay, well, I'll figure something else out. I'll do something else around here, you know, and then no problem. So he gave my man, God bless his soul, my man Will passed away. But he, you know, he gave him the job. And then, um, you know, Will, he, you know, he was just... Like, hey, y'all need some clothes? Here go a box of clothes. Like, he didn't even, like, like separate it. Or, right. Because it, it, was, it was a lot. It's, it's a lot to do. Like, if I'm sitting here, right, yeah. perfect example, I got Jagged Edge. Jagged Edge is my boys, right? So I look at them. All the time they dress alike. Okay, so I want to dress you alike, but I want to change the color. So you might be in all leather jackets, but y'all be in all different color leather jackets. Let me find you know out I mean? you was the original NFT starter. Let me find out. Let me. <laughs> they don't know. Like I had to like really look at everybody and assess, you know, because there was cats that, you know, didn't didn't wear certain things. You right. know what I'm saying? But I would have to look at them, and kind of style them and dress them and send them. You know, actually pick the clothes and send it to them. Hopefully they like it and they would, they would wear it. And I was like, man, I'm getting good at this. You know, even my boy Trey the Truth. You know, Trey, back then Trey was wearing a a six x. 6x shirt yeah what was it 44 42 waist and i'm like bro you don't even you're not even this big and he was like yo this is that's what i like right. you know i talked to slim thug or whatever and he, he don't wear certain shirts you know right. you know you know it was like they certain guys may wear just t-shirts they don't wear polos or they don't wear button-ups or 
you know, at that time. So, you know, you had to dress him accordingly. But it wasn't something that was easy. But when he gave he gave the job to him, a couple of I want to say about a not even a year later, maybe like eight nine months later. <laughs> My partners, we was all in the office. My partners like, hey, you know, guys, come to the office. We got to talk. So we get to the office. And they're like, how do we give away $2.5 million worth of samples? Oh. I was like. <laughs> so they looking at me. I said, don't look at me. No, that wasn't my position. Well, I, ain't, I ain't did it in the last nine months. <laughs> so they, they wind up. um they wound up asking D and then D was like, Oh, we, you know, I'll look into it. You know, I know Will's been doing it. And he was like, uh-uh, why, why Keith ain't doing it? Keith wouldn't give away no two million dollars worth of samples. I was like, talk to your boy right there. He, so it kind of pissed him off a little bit. So he was like, we left the office, he got outside. He was like, I'm still not giving you the job back. I'm going to give it to Jared. Jared going to do it. Jared know, know these people. And I said, no problem. So Jared goes out there, he tries to knock out some things and he can't, he can't get it done. Like, you know, people don't know him. Like he was, he was even, you know, and, and he's my boy. I'm, I'm not talking about him, of but course. he, didn't, he wasn't course. associated. Like Will was associated. Like when people saw us, they saw Will. Right. When people saw us, they didn't really necessarily see him all the time. So they didn't know who he was. So for him to go on set and try to, and try to do what we did, he, he just couldn't get it done. And I remember, I don't remember exactly what video it was, but it was a video that we really wanted to get into. And I was like, yo, send me out, man. Let me do it. He was like, nah, Jerry got it. Jerry. I said, okay. And boy came back and said, man, <laughs> I couldn't even get to the people. I could, they, you know, they had me standing on the side with the suitcases and, mm like four hours and I just after that I just left I was like yo this don't make no sense I, I can't get in and then um my and then what was funny because Damien came back to me he was like yo um yeah you might be right mm-hmm. you know I might I might have underestimated you and your talents a little bit. you know he was like you um he said this definitely is not an easy job because I just sent two people out there who really tried to that I thought that can handle it and they couldn't handle it. And you do that shit with so much ease. Like you go out there, you make it happen. So I was like, yeah, man, it's not, it's not easy. You know, I, I got the relationships with all the stylists. I know all the artists, I know everybody. So when I go on set, I know the directors, I know the, mm. the, the production company, I know the people who work at all the production company. Like I know everybody. So if I turn around, either way I turn around, I know somebody and I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm gonna figure it out. Right. So and then that's how I got my, my my position back, and I've been doing it ever since. So a lot of stuff that you see on on um you know the movies and TV shows and shows like Atlanta, and I remember talking to their their team about that whole bullying thing and coming up with the concept and how he was going to do it and all that stuff. So you know I I help a lot in in those areas, but I've been doing that for for I, I'm going to say almost since the beginning. Wow. <clears throat> Shout out to that. Um, so talk about how important it is to play your position and or stepping back when you need to step back and stepping forward when you need to step forward. Because because you mentioned a lot of like, you know, a lot of people, you know, being sent out to to play a position that wasn't meant for them. And now they've been sent back to now come back to you. So talk about how important it is to play your position and, and what position needs to be played, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, you know what it is? You just got to let people, you know, like when he underestimated me, underestimated me and said that my job was easy, I knew for damn sure it wasn't easy. I was like, man, this, this job ain't easy. I don't know what you're talking about. But if that's what you think, then I'm going to let you think that, you know, so I kind of stepped back. But we've got a relationship amongst all of us where mm. we really, um, I want to say, how can I say it? We know when to push the buttons and we know when to let up off the buttons. You know what I'm saying? So it's like if 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 one of us or a few of us are acting fly, you know, somebody going to check you. Somebody going to check you. You may not like it, but they going to check you. They going to say something. And, you know, sometimes like, you know, me, I know me and Jay, I think me and Jay have, have the most arguments because Jay don't be wanting nobody to tell him nothing. So I I don't want to be, I don't want to hear that. Cause I'm like, yo, I'm your man. I'm going to tell you what I want to tell you. I don't care if you want to 
you know, buck up and get mad and do all that stuff. I don't care. You know what I mean? It doesn't bother me. So we really have the most arguments amongst all, you know, all of us, but you know, we all know. And then it's funny with us because we'll have an argument and then like at six o'clock and then eight o'clock, you'll be like, Yo, what you gonna get? What you eating? And let's go <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I like we let didn't it have, draw on. Like, we didn't even have this argument. So and, and people always say, you know, how you guys uh how you guys uh been able to stay together all of these years yeah. and it's you know we were friends first you know what i mean so it was it wasn't like we started as business partners you know we started as friends hanging out drinking as young teenagers and doing all the things teenagers do and then growing up together and you know when we went through this whole ride or going through this whole ride with fubu it was uh you know it, it was you know you didn't really is it like we don't really have any we we've have situations that right. we're gonna talk about in the documentary. Right, right. But for the most part, we don't really have like major, major blowouts. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Mm-mm-mm. So how did you feel seeing your products in the stores and on celebrities and being mentioned at the rate that it was going once you guys started to put it out to, you know, to the world? Um, so when we first started you know, and I like to give shout out to to these people because, you know, they no longer, I'm not going to say they no longer, but they're not in say, so much like the public eye. So you wouldn't know know that. And if we don't mention them, people will, know, will not know that they were the, like the really the first ones to support us. So I like to give a big shout out to the brand Nubians, you know, because they were one of the first people to put us in a, in a video. I'll give a big shout out to Miss Jones, um, her and Moni Love. <clears throat> Ward in their video in her and Miss Jones video. Um, who else? I know obviously everybody know L, but you know, and I like to give a big shout out to Fredro Star because he was one of the reasons like we, we got our deal. Because he really you know, we um and this was unbeknownst to him. He just wanted some clothes to wear in New York undercover. And you know, we did this thing with um, you know, we put this ad out in, in the paper and all kind of crazy and shady people start calling us off this tens of millions of dollars over the phone. And like, we like four hood dudes. So we like, man, go ahead. And give us no $20 million. You know, you don't even sound right. What's your name? Let me look you up and see what's going on. Right. And then, um, you know, ask about you because it was, really wasn't no looking up back then, but you know, ask around and see who you were. Um, but we did it. We did it. We had a meeting with Samsung and they did the, um, you know, they came in, did the whole, whole spiel and, you know, it was like, okay, we'll call you back and never called us back. And then we said, you know what, let's just keep going. And then I think about three months later, two months later, something like that. Fredro was like, yo, I'm coming by the house to pick up some stuff. And um, I'm aware on New York undercover. So we gave him a bunch of stuff and um, he got killed in one of the shirts mm-hmm. and it was like a slow motion, like, one of those, and then from this angle, then from that angle, we were like, man, it's like a 30 second commercial right now. So, um, so he wound up getting killed in the shirt and, and the people saw that on TV and was like, oh shit, these guys are still out here. Right. So we went out and did another meeting and that was it. That was it. And what year, around what year was that? This is 90. <laughs> In 96? 96, okay. Because soon after, that's when the infamous LL Cool J situation happened when he wore your outfit in the... Yeah, but, L, but which, what people don't realize is L was wearing it. He 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 did our first um, one. Well, we did an ad with, you know, a couple of... Um, I think it was my sister, Carl's brother, and I forget who else was in the ad, but it was like, you know, people we knew that was in the ad. Right. Then our next major ad was with LL Cool J when he was like just doing a little wrinkled shirt and was going to LA. He was shooting out to LA and we just took a picture of him and put it in the magazine. Mm-hmm. But um at first, like he really didn't like the shirts because it had like a purple, it had like purple in it. Mm-hmm. He was like, What's up with the purple B? What's up? I feel a little Barney-ish, man. What's going on? Like, I don't like this, man. Like, make some other colors, I'll wear it. And we were like, All right, cool, you know. But right now you're going hopefully. Right. <laughs> Was so we could get to the next le- level, and then I think the next time he came back from LA, we were like, you know, L, like, you know, how could we get, you know, we was asking for advice, and then he was like, yo, you gotta, um, you gotta find a, a celebrity and endorse you, and you you put it on his back, and 
you know, you do what you got to do. And, 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 you know, he'll take you to that next level. So we were like, man, we went back home and was like, man, who, who can we get? Who can we get? Like trying to think about it. And we was like, well, why don't we just get XL? Came back and asked him. And he was like, listen, man, I got all these other deals on the table. You know, I don't know. I don't know. And then we just kept being real persistent. And he was like, you know what? Since you guys are persistent, you're from around the way, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to help y'all get up out of here. And mm. he, you know, he said, if y'all, and then he, he didn't charge us anything in the beginning, but he said, if y'all make any money, I want to, you know, I want in. The back end, and, right? And he, yeah, he was like, all right, no problem. I remember giving him his first check, though. It was for like 75 racks. And um, he was doing a phenomenon. <laughs> <laughs> So David was like, yo, take this to L, shoot this to L when you get out there. So I was like, all right. So I didn't know what was in it. I just, I had an envelope. So I, was, I held it. So I gave it to him. He opened up the envelope. He was like, mm. yo, <laughs> we making this amount of money from clothes? I was like, yeah. He was like, boom, check this out. Tell D I want a red Ferrari. Da, 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 da. He said, I was like, but that's the down payment for the Ferrari. He said, no, no, this is my money. I need a red Ferrari, yo. It was funny. Like, we was laughing all day on set. He <laughs> just was like, oh, this is where it's at. I'm, <laughs> I yeah, met y'all where y'all at. <laughs> I spent my money on this. I need to spend y'all. So I'm sure soon after, a lot more attention came your way and a lot more like successes uh, came your way. Is there something that you can like talk about that just really took you to the point where, okay, FUBU is where we needed to be and then we can move forward to the record label? Because I know you guys have started a record label soon after. Yeah, that, that, didn't, that didn't happen until like five years, like five years later, the record label. Mm -hmm. But I remember, you know, just us even getting a deal and, People starting to see us on TV and everything. Yeah. We were still like one foot in the hood. And, you know, Damon was like, yo, I'm out. Pew. <laughs> Jay was like, yo, I'm out. Pew. I was like, okay. And Carl, he didn't live in the house at the time. So I was like the only one left. And I remember coming home one night. And, you know, back then, we, like I said, we were still in the streets. So, you know, I was already leery about things. So I was, you know, I was holding a little something. <laughs> so I get back to the, I get back to the house and I hear some movement in the backyard. So I was like, okay, let me back up out of here. <laughs> let me just back up. Like I, I could go there and have a situation, right. but let me just back up out this situation. Then I told guys, I was like, yo, I got to move, man. It's just getting crazy over here. Like, you know, and then we moved, I, I, I moved before that and then you know after that you know we all obviously bought houses and right. did out what we need to do and then you know the record label was something that you know happened in 2001 right. we were like you know what you know i think it was call cause idea you wanted to do some something in the music industry you know especially since the music industry was invading the fashion industry. You know what I mean? So right. we were like, all right, y'all coming to get our money? <laughs> well, come get you some of yours. And then um, <laughs> we went ahead and, and and put that together. And it was a success too. I mean, you know, um, we had all like mostly original content on the album from, you know, different people and, you know, Nas and yeah. Nate Dogg and, you know, um, Dawn from In Vogue and yeah. who Cheeks. else was on there. Mr. Um, Cheek. It was a, oh man, I just had it up here. I was just reading it. Um, uh, Keith Murray, yep. you know, that just came home from jail. So wow. we put him on it. And then um, Luda L, um, Eric Sermon. Yes. And just, at the time I, you were, did y'all have distribution through Universal or how did, how did well, that we even had a, work? We had a JV, we had a JV deal with, um, with Universal. So, okay. you know, then we did a couple of, did a little tour with one of our groups that we had from um from uh 54th yeah 54th right? okay Water. you know they like they like my brothers now they all like family now but yeah we did it we did a tour with them and and you know it, it was fun it was fun that while it lasted and then uh then we yeah, we had to move on there's a lot of shady shady stuff going on in there you know there's a lot of shady stuff going on in every business but they was uh it was crazy. Like people were trying to sell us songs that they didn't own. You know, he, I, I remember this, this, uh, uh, what is it? 
I'm trying to think whose husband was this? Oh. I don't want to say the wrong. I mean, gonna say the <laughs> <laughs> there was one of these radio personality husbands in the in the game. I don't know if it was Wendy Williams. Or I don't know. I don't know. Um, but anyway, he tried to sell us a song that, like, the girl on the song sounded like Tamia, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, she has a beautiful voice. She sounds just like Tamia. And um, and the song was hot. And the next thing you know, I come in the studio, and you know he has this heavy set girl in the studio. And she's blowing, but she's blowing like, you know, like Jennifer Hudson type blowing. Like it's a whole different, you know, she's not, she sang, she sang, Mm -hmm. but she didn't sound like that. And I was like, well, sing that song. I want you to sing that song because it didn't sound right. So then we found out and then she sung it, but I was just like, something ain't right, something ain't right. And then one of the producers is just like, yo, dog. Yo, I ain't gonna let this happen to y'all, man. Y'all good people, man. Like, that's not the same chick. So we had to stop. We had to put stop payment on the check and all of that stuff. And it was crazy. But, you know, there's a lot of shadiness going on in the music industry. Now, would you ever bring that back today? Um, You know what? I think that's something that requires a whole team, mm, you know, okay. and we didn't. You know, we were trying to do clothing here right. and then we were going on, you know, marketing tours with for the clothing. And then we were trying to go on, you know, because Carl was the CEO of that. I was the COO of that, that um, label. And it was like trying to split your time between two mm. things. It was, it was hard. You know what I mean? It was, right. it wasn't, it wasn't easy. So I think, you know, something like that needs a hundred percent attention or you need a whole team that's going to be able to run that on a daily basis. Cause it's not something that you, you know, you just dim and dab, you know? So, and, and I think that's one of the reasons when, you know, one of my partners approached me about doing the radio um, station, I was like, I was like, you know what, you know, we did the music thing. It's just something that we can do. I don't have to be, you know, dealing with the artists and flights and this right, and that right. and hotels and attitudes and people need rent money and this, that, and the baby mama money. And, you know, I mean, it was, it was like, it was just crazy. So I was, I was like, you know what? I can do a radio station because this way I could, I could put people on. Um, I can help build careers. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I can employ some, some really talented people, um, which, you know, and, and it doesn't take all of that. Right. So I you know that's something but if we were to do something with with a label again it would have to be you know 100 percent in like not you know and i know like jay got has the forest buyers network okay and, um, okay you know so everybody already got other things working so how do you bring that back into the fold so i, I think it would be hard at this point and then especially the way the, the industry is going right now. You know what I mean? Talk like everybody it. wants to be independent and um, really not have all that to deal with anymore. And, you know, so. Mm, yes. And so did Virginia, cause I'm in Virginia now, how, how much of Virginia played a part or a role in the upbringing of FUBU and your brand as a whole? Um, You know, like when early days, we used to do this uh, expo, the Black Expo. Okay. So we used to travel all over, like all states, <laughs> like wherever it was at. We was we were there trying to trying to make it happen. Right. Um, and I know we used to be in that DMV area a lot. You know what I mean? And yeah. trying to build it because that's the closest thing to New York for us. Right. You know. Um, so we did. I know we did um, that area. We did New York. Uh, we did Atlanta. Uh, and I think that was pretty much it. But every year we would be back and forth, back and forth. Um, and I think it that helped us really build a, a community because when our clothes first came out, people was like, man, I've been looking for y'all stuff everywhere. I couldn't find it. I'm right. like, oh, man, I'm glad. Y'all out, we out in stores. And then even right before we, we, we got our deal and um, – well, we had the deal on the table. We were telling people, like, go to all your favorite stores and ask for it. Just keep asking for it. And he come back every week. Every time you pass that store, ask for it. So it created a demand. So once the, the, the brand was out there, it was like, oh, okay. You know, now y'all out there. We're going to buy y'all up. But um, 
Yeah, I mean, we, you know, Virginia Beach, we used to travel to Virginia Beach all the time. We used to, you know, not hang out in Virginia Beach. We used to do, you know, whenever, because I think that was the furthest we went, you know, as far as the concerts. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. we go up to like, I know you go as far as Boston, then we go down to like Virginia and that. We, we, we wouldn't go like North Carolina and right. South. We wouldn't go all the way down there, but, you know, that's that's not that far for us. Because the reason why I asked is, you know, Virginia has a lot of talent, and I see that <clears throat> Pharrell was on your album. Um, mm-hmm. Mr. Cheeks, which is um, Bink Dog, he did the beat to that. So he's a part of Virginia. So a lot of the Virginia is in it, and I just wanted to see your opinion on on um, how it contributed to your journey. And so um, you also had, later on down the line, you guys had to do a relaunch or a rebrand, and it became um, FB Legacy. And then um, throughout the years, you were contributing to your community by doing and giving back to the community. Can you give a little bit of insight on how you kind of transitioned from, you know, being an entrepreneur to being into public speaking and to going into that aspect of your life? Well, I mean, so... To tap in what you first said about FB Legacy, you know, we had um, how that all came about is we thought we only had like three years. So we were like, you know what? We got three years. We got to go get all the money we can. And then we got to figure out what, what the what the next plan is going to be, because, you know, they're not going to let us survive or last in this business too long. And that was a mindset we went in there. So after the first three, four years went by, we were like, OK, this is. And we might have a couple more years here. So what we did was we, and I think it was around 99, 2000, um, we had went overseas and developed our brand overseas. We're opening 200 freestanding stores overseas in places like Turkey and Milan and, and Saudi Arabia and France and Germany and, you know, all these places that we, you know, really didn't know that even, you know, we knew they had a hip hop community, but we didn't know that like they were wearing, like, if you told me like people wearing football in Saudi Arabia, I would have never believed you out of me. Been, like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but they were, you know, I was, they were schooling us saying like, yo, you, everybody has a, a, a community, a hip hop community there. Like places, you know, you, you may not think of, but there's kids that, that have, you know, that into hip hop in every community. So we wound up doing that. And then that kind of gave us a little more life and, and a little more legs and, we was like, okay, cool. You know what I mean? This is, this is, you know, going to take us to, you know, maybe 10 years, you know? It's bigger at this uh, point. Then once we got into like the seventh year, eighth year, we were like, man, this thing is, you know, <laughs> this thing is still going. Like, all right. And then I remember one year, I think it was around the ninth year. I think it was like 2004. And then, yeah, I want to say like 2004, 2005. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe like 2003, 2004, because it was around a, so that's four years. Yeah, no, 2004, 2005. We, um, we, we were not getting any distribution. And, um, and, you know, we, we counted on that. Like, you know, it was a big check. So when we were, the checks wasn't coming through, it was like, yo, what's up? Like, what's going on? And it was like, yo, you got 23.5 million or 26.2 million, something like that. And I think it was like 26.2 um, million dollars worth of um, product in the warehouse that we need to get rid of. <laughs> so we were like, what? Damn. So we just went on a straight, like, all right, boom, we're going to sell this. This is what this is going to be. Like, we start cutting it down. So I went to the warehouse one day and um, just to see what was going on. And there was a lot, you know, when you, working with clothes you drop some on the floor they get dirty they get put in a big you know box you know as damaged and there was like these like i want to say either four or six huge boxes that had damaged clothes in them all things from like ripped up leathers and you know all kind of stuff so what we did was we was like you know i think it was coming up on a on holiday like christmas or something we was like yo what are we going to do with all these clothes? So he was like, yo, let's just figure out where we can go, like, you know, shelters and places mm-hmm. that people really need clothes. And we just give give the clothes out. So we was like, I bet that's that's a good idea. So when we went and did that, 
we didn't think about the kickback from that. We just was like, yo, we want to provide clothes to people who don't have clothes and we have all of these clothes that we can make a difference, you know? And it's something that we, we've thought about plenty of times that, you know, we said we had to do it again. We would do the same thing, but, um, you know, you know, people in these shelters and these places and these homeless, homeless, um, places started walking around with food more. <laughs> so people was like, Oh, hell no. I ain't wearing that no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So kind of like it, it, it kind of killed the brain a little bit, mm. you know, a lot. I ain't even going to say a little bit, you know, people just wasn't messing with us like that no more. So we were like, okay, so we have all this money, we've done all this stuff. What can we do now? And he was like, all right, well, we're going to sit this football thing down for a minute and we're going to work on some other stuff. And um, I remember all the artists was like, yo, I'm doing Oscars. I'm doing this. And you ain't got nothing. You ain't got this. You ain't got that. So I went to Damon one day. I said, like, yo, what if we just did like just specialty pieces? Like we would do like oh. custom jackets and just be one of one and we just give it to cats and they doing certain things just to keep the name out there. He was like, man, I don't see no sense in that. You know, that's going to cost a whole lot of money and this, that, and other. And then what kind of impact does it make? We can't, we can't sell it. We can't make no money off of it. Da, 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 da. So I was like, but it is just keep the name out there. If it just keeps the name out there, we'll be good. So he wasn't with it. So he said, you know what? We should just do a whole new line, just something different. So me and Jay, at the time, we went, you know, in the office and we was like, you know what? Let's, let's try to create something. So Jay went. You know, he's researched all this stuff. He came back with all these fly ass designs and we sat down and we made this line called we we was like it was like F evolution it was like FUBU ev- the evolution of FUBU. That's right. what it was. And so we didn't want to really use FUBU, so we just used the F and then we had evolution under it, and then we had all this other stuff, and then we was like, you know what? Let's change the name to Crown Holder. Let's just change it all together to Crown Holder and nobody would know. You know, it, we could just make money and nobody would hate because, right. you know, people be hating sometimes. So we did that. We brought that line up to like 20 million. And then after that, we started investing in, in other brands and, and working with other brands and bringing them into the office. And we did that for a couple of years. And then that the um, whole FB Legacy um, Damon was like, yo, we need to do this FB Legacy and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I was like, all right, cool. Then once we did it, it kind of got, um, instead of being this big rollout, mm-hmm. it just like, okay, well, we're just going to do black and white and white and blue. And I'm like, how, how does that help me? I, <laughs> with that? Right. I said, um, cats, you already know these cats are fashionable. They ain't going to wear the same shirt everybody got on right. all the time. Like, So anyway, that didn't get off the ground. We didn't, that didn't even get legs because of the whole market crashing in 2008. Cause we launched it in 2008 okay. and it was just, you know, we did a whole campaign behind it, all these videos with everybody. And it just, it just never went anywhere. We never got it off the ground. And then after that, Damon was like, you know, then we had a, a, a chance to be, have a, BT reality show. So everybody was gassed. Everybody was like, yo, this is what's gonna take us to the next level. Yo, we're gonna we're gonna tell all the stuff that we did and how we did it. And da, 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 da. Damon wasn't with it. And the reason we found out later he wasn't with it is because he had the the deal on the table with the shark tank. So oh. he was like, I don't know if I want to do all of that. I wanna, you know what I mean? I wanna yeah. understood. I want to talk about, I want to do this other thing, but he wasn't telling us what he was doing at the time. And then he wound up going ahead and doing that. And then, you know, we, you know, kind of sat down at that point. I said to myself, I was going to retire. You know what I mean? I was Mm. like, yeah, I'm retired right now. I'm good. You know? And then I sat down for about a year, year and a half. And I was like, all right, with this retirement, I got to get <laughs> Fuck all that. So, yeah, I was like, this is boring. I ain't got time for this. And then I went back out there. I went back out there, did my thing. And um, and then a couple of years later, I want to say it was like 2013, that I, I started um I started working with him with his shock group. Okay. And that's how I got, you know, and it's and that's even a funny story because I called him one day and you know, sometimes. I had, he used to tell me all the time, he said, yo, he said, you, you get in your own way. He been telling me this for like 10 years. I'm like, 
man, you still telling me this? Like, like sometimes he just be harping on things sometimes, but then this one, I was just like, something, something ain't right. Like, you keep telling me the same thing. So I wound up trying to assess myself. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, I kind of looked, stepped out of my body and looked at some of the things that I was doing and things that I was, how I was reacting. And, and I was like, okay, so what the me, the one thing I immediately knew, I was like, okay, you have to let go of this persona of who you was versus who you, where you trying to go and who you want to be. Because I feel like when you hold on to something like, Oh, I'm key from Fubu. This, that, that, that. I did this. I did that. It kind of hinders you from doing other things because, you know, you be worried about what people going to say or you know, or how they going to judge you and all that stuff. So you can't get over to the next level. Right. And then the other thing was my, you know, my my ego and my, you know, and I was like, okay, in my pride, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna let all this go, and then we gonna have a conversation. So once I did that. I talked to him one day and he was telling me about a problem he was having with shipping and paying all his money for the UPS and all that. So I was like, yo, if you need any help, let me know. I'll come, you know, because I ain't doing shit right now anyway. So it'd be cool to get back in and, in the groove of things. So he was like, yeah, you know, I'm going to need some help with shipping. <laughs> so I was like, see, now the old me, the old me would have been like, Motherfucker, what you talking about? But the new me was like, I need help with shipping. Cool. Like, you know, because one thing about us is we've done everything under the sun. Mm. So it's not really that I can't do. You know what I mean? Like, I, I certain things I can't do, you know, maybe, you know, technical wise or graphic wise, because I'm that's not my thing. But if it's something like, you know, administration or, you know, doing things like that, I could, I could do that. So I was like, all right, let's 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 do it. So then I did that for a while. And then once I was in there, he was like, all right, now you got to figure out something else. Like, what else can you do while you're here? And I was like, well, you know, maybe I can introduce your people, you know, your 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 clients to our celebrities, you know. And then that's how we kind of got that thing going on. Then I started the brand manager of the Shark oh. Tank. And then, I mean, the Shark Group. And then, um... And then from there, you know, we just we just rocked out from there, you know, and and we've been we've been doing it ever since. And was that also where Fubu Radio was created? Because um, yeah, that was created that back was, in 2015. That was where Fubu Radio was created. Okay. Um, okay. One of my other friends came to me one day, um, Demetrius, um, and he came to me one day and he was like, "Yo, you ever think about doing radio?" And I'm like. Uh, no, not necessarily, you know, because at that time I didn't know what it would take, what it what it would take to, to even get it off the ground. So he was like, you know what? Um, it won't take that much. This is what we need. We just need a little spot or something, this, that, and third. But at the time I didn't have a spot. So I was like, okay, well, let's just put this on hold till we figure this out. And then he kept coming back to me, you know, every three more four months. It's like, yo, you know you have anything yet and we can figure it out. He was like, listen, we could just do this. Like you could just really get a, a, a room. You go in a bathroom with somebody and Facts. just plug the thing up and do what you got to do. It's not that hard. And then I remember hanging around Tigger one time. We was, we was somewhere and he was like, yo, come to me in my room one second. And he had the whole setup in his, in his hotel room. And I'm like, hey, you going on the radio right now? <laughs> so he was like, yeah, man, I got to do my show real quick. So I'm like, wow. Um, so I, I already knew how that looked. And then I was like, you know what? You know, I went and bought this little board about this mm-hmm. big thinking, oh, you, he told me, oh, you need a little board. And so then when I want to record somebody, it was only two outlets. So it was me and somebody else. Right. And if it was two people, I was, I was fucked up. <laughs> I couldn't even do nothing with two people. Right. So then I kept graduating, graduating, getting bigger boards and bigger boards. But um, we wound up taking over one of the, the um, one of the rooms, the showrooms in the, in the office. Um, well, it was like a meeting room, or whatever. And I would transform it, hang up the posters, and do everything in there, and and have my little, you know, my little studio set up, right. and guests come in there. And then we wind up moving from the tenth. What uh, was on the tenth floor? We wind up moving to the penthouse, and we moved to the penthouse on the second floor. Of the penthouse it was like a real open, big open area, so I was able to. Finagle my way into a little one of them little cubicle 
uh, booths in there, and then we we rocked out from there. Mm. And, and that was some of the best times actually that that I had, you know, because it was it was new, so mm. everybody was trying to get their feet wet, and we went through like two or three teams, and this is my third team I'm working with now, and we've been together for like like most of us like three four years now so oh and it's still in in rotation as you can see in the back you see it in the back product yeah, placement yeah. himself Famous stuff. Famous stuff. <laughs> you know i know that's right that's what i was really like turning your video i was like now hold on i got i had just walked to the house i had to take off my shirts and everything with jacket i was like let me him get myself right <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I got my uh, food radio in the building yeah. right there. Um, yeah, it's still, uh, it's, it's, you know, we, we took a hit from the pandemic. It was crazy because right before the pandemic, we were actually turning that corner. And um, once we turned that corner, I was like, oh, man, it's going to be the best year yet. So it was like February. Then it's like March. Then it's like, boom, shut down. I'm like, wow. So then they're trying to figure out how to maneuver and and how to, um, you know, give my team space to re- to to figure things out. Right. And, you know, it wasn't really all about recording. I was like, don't worry about recording and all that. Get your shit together. Get your mind right. I'll play music. We'll survive. And then we come back. Everybody, you know, once you get, you know, your finances figured out, and then we can we can figure it out. Because, you know, it was a rough time for everybody. But then um, once, the, once that first year passed, I was like, okay, it's not going to last couple of years it's only going to be you know uh you know six months eight months or something but then when that second year hit it was just like wow but we were able to at that point people was and figured it out right. and we were able to now have everybody record from home and do whatever they need to do from home and um and then we just did you know we just rocked out from there and then i wound up um signing this uh this deal with this company called U42 um, gaming company, but they didn't switch their whole thing around now. So they have this whole platform that, you know, that they, they pay people to watch the commercials and, you know, they go get advertising for you and do all of this stuff. You just got to give them the content to put up there. So we wound up making that deal in the pandemic. So that was cool. And, and um, now we're working with them. We have a studio out in Atlanta that um, we record out of, down there and then i got a um we have a spot in uh office in uh north carolina and then um i'm up here we haven't got a new spot up well they just opened up up here uh not too long ago Mm -hmm. so probably within the next six months i'll get a uh, look for a spot get another spot up here okay well don't forget virginia (laughs) you got nobody in virginia hey yeah, I'm. I do okay. listen. We just hooked up and we met, so now you got somebody in Virginia. I got my own studio with my my significant other. He has a studio out here that I record out of, and you know we can do it. We can definitely. And I've done radio before. I've done switch. What is it? Switchboard or switch something? Whatever it is. And I used to run core DJ radio. So um, I I got a lot of background. We'll talk about it um, later, but this is about you right now. (laughs) So we're going to get to um, a couple of final things, which is in 2019, you just signed to Century 21. Is that the is that what you were speaking of with Forever 21 or is that 21? Okay, so what happened was in 2016, you know, I, I was. We were in the office, Shark Group office, and I was telling Damon, I was like, yo, you know, the social media, man, everybody wearing all these clothes and they talking about bring us back and this, that, and the third. Like, and he looked at me, he was like, man, I ain't got no time for that. <laughs> he was like, I ain't got no time for that, bro. I got, you know, I'm doing speaking engagements. I'm doing shopping. I'm, you know, investing in all these companies. I got all this stuff going on. So I was like, all right, well, you know, well, maybe we can handle it. You know what I'm saying? We go get the guys and let the guys know that, you know, we can go out here and, and, and put this together and, you know, we'll work it out. So he was like, all right, well, I'll work it out. You know, I'm here. You know, if y'all need me, I'm here, but I just don't have time to do that on a day to day anymore. So I was like, all right, no problem. So I talked to the guys. They were like, all right, let's do it. You know, both of them was like, you know, let's do it. So I was like, all right, cool. So we started, you know, just putting everything back together. We got the um, Instagram, started working on the Instagram and social media and Facebook and all that stuff. Because for so many years, you know, we wasn't really checking, you know, 
uh, Facebook and all that right. stuff. So it was a lot of stuff. Switch things around, and finally we were like, okay, let's let's put it out there. We had to build another website. We had to do all this stuff and get all this stuff prepared. And then um, it was like, okay, do they really want it, or are they just talking? Because you know they can have you go out and spend a whole lot of money, and nobody. And there's a few people just talking about they want you, and the rest don't you know don't care nothing about you. So what we did was we we put up um we start putting out collaborations. We did one with Crepe Man and um. In Japan, and then we did one with Pada in France, and then we let that simmer for a little while, and then we did one with Urban Outfitters, and then we did one with um, Ebbets Field and Mitchell and Ness, and then Puma. Then we was like, by the time we got to Puma, it was like, okay, this thing is is, is really catching on. And then we was like, um, we reached out to uh, this, this uh, company, um, this 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 uh, store out in LA called Sorella Boutique, Heather Sanders. And she was like, yeah, I'd love to do something with y'all. And he was like, all right. And then she just like, she put her stamp on it. And, you know, she had Kylie Jenner, Lala, Harlow, wow. and, and Megan Thee Stallion. And she had everybody in it. And I was like, and then at that point I was like, wow, this is, these are new people. This is, this is not people that from the back of the day that just liked it and want to see it come back. These are new people like. So he was like, okay, it might be time to, to put some stuff out. So at that time, we didn't even, you know, we, it was like, I want to say 2018 after we did the Puma thing and the Sorella. I think Sorella was like 2019, so right before the summer. And then um, and then before you knew it, once we started to get it up and running and we, we, we got suits ready, we had our eyewear ready to launch. Then we had um, our... Um, men's line ready to launch here then we had already set up um europe and in in south africa so we was like okay it's gonna be a nice little rollout here you know what i mean right. like this is gonna be a nice little rollout then boom that pandemic came so then we were like okay all these you know all these big ideas that we had none of them can get executed you know in the right way so at the end of um to 2020 December 2020 we was like okay we we got to do something you know we we did all this work for you know we got to launch something so we was like listen let's just do a whole, whole bunch of sweatsuits some really nice heavy sweatsuits and put it out and so we did that then we took flag from that <laughs> oh where the jeans at where this at where the boots at where the baseball jacket where the hats at where the... it was like bro like you don't understand it's a fucking pandemic yeah. man like yeah. We, we lucky we got these sweatsuits. Right. Like we had all of that on the table or everything, the jackets, the jeans, everything on the table, but we couldn't get it done. And then the, and then the prices was, was enormous. So you already, you know, we came up with these, these sweatsuits and, and the prices was crazy. And they like, Oh, Oh y'all, y'all, y'all beside y'all. So I ain't paying no $130 for no hoodie from y'all. You crazy. So he was like, okay, here we go. But we just persevered and we was like, you know what, we're gonna keep going. And um last year we launched um we launched I well the, the lounge wear, we launched the hat wear, um, we launched betting, which actually that that happened this year. And then um and then what else? I'm forgetting. So we opened up Japan, we opened up the United Emirates, and then uh and then we were working on this thing with Forever 21 since last last year. And then top of the year came. And then it was just like on, like, okay, this is dropping March 10th. We got well, how we doing it, what we doing, it's that and third. And then just to see all the people come out and support that and, and the young kids and uh, like they like they bombarding us with so much content that, you know, and I'm just posting everybody up. And I know that some people are like, oh, man, thank you for reposting me. And I'm like, that's all good, man. Thank you for wearing it because, you know, you you 20 years old. Like, this was, you wasn't even born when this stuff was out, right. you know, when we, were, when we were out there like that. So, you know, just to see them still still rocking. And then we got a kids line coming out um, this fall. So okay. I'm excited to see that. Like, that's going to be dope. Like, you know, we're doing it with um uh, more of a high-end um kids company licensee so mm -hmm. they really they've been sending us some stuff and it looks good so far so i'm excited to see that come down the pipeline 
And then what else we got? Um, I think that's it right now. I said loungewear. Yeah, I mm-hmm. said loungewear. Um, yeah, and then we'll just see how all this stuff goes. And everything. everybody's pretty much doing okay with it. So, you know, hopefully it continues. And it's kind of ironic that everything is starting to come back in full circle 30 years later. And so um, shout out to you all for all. So when when is the actual date for the 30 year anniversary? Did it pass or is it coming up? This Sunday. This Sunday? Like within one week from today? That's crazy. That is that's this is beyond me right now. This is it's 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 mind boggling to me because it's just the way things are happening. And I know it's supposed to happen for a reason like this. And so I just want to show my appreciation and, and, you know, say congratulations to making it 30 years in this game or this thing called entertainment and continuing with what you're doing um, as a brand and as an overall human, because without you all, it wouldn't be a lot of things following it and a lot of inspiration behind it. So I appreciate that. Um, And we're going to get up out of here here shortly, but I have, Two more questions, and then I have exclusive an exclusive access, because I know you have mentioned that you all will be doing a documentary in which we definitely will need that. So is that coming out soon, like 2022? or no, we've, been, we've, been, we've been shopping it and we've been talking about it for a while. Um, we had an A-list actor, director, producer looking at it and was going to put it out, but then the pandemic hit, and then everything kind of got pushed back, and so um, I know Damon told us the other day that he was working on something with one of the major companies out in L.A. So, okay. you know, I don't want to jinx it. I, I I get tired of talking about it. I just okay. I just put it out there, but I don't want to jinx it. So I'm going to let him I'll let him come back and, 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 and let us know that everything is ready to go. I can't um, wait for it. Because you know what it is? It's like we never really we never really told our story. So everybody knows the story that we told them. You know what I mean? Like, you know, all the the FUBU path, yeah. you know, you don't know my path, you don't know Damien's path, you don't know our individual paths. And then I've, I think I've been through the most traumatic <laughs> childhood than any of them, you know, cause you know, Damon grew up, like they all grew up in houses. Like I was in, I was in apartment building, right. you know, sleeping, you know, in the room with my sister till I was like 12, 13 years old. I was like, oh, I can't do this no more. I, I'm going to go sleep on the couch. <laughs> you know what I mean? But right. it just right. wasn't, you know, it wasn't all that grandioso, you know what I'm saying? So, right. and then the, the, the things that I went through in my life and in situations and, you know, I got into like a, or near fatal car crash when I was 17, I almost died when I was 17. And, you know, having your mother tell you you're going to die before you're 21 every goddamn day. I'm like, yo, you're my mom's. What's wrong with you? She was like, it's just the way you live in, son. I'm telling you, you wilding out here in these streets. I used to fight all the time. I used to come home, uh, knuckles all bloody or the lumps on my head and shit. She'd be like, what the hell happened? I'm like, hey, you know, you said something about my mama. You said this. She'd be like, listen here. You want to figure this out because you ain't gonna be able to just fight everybody that talk about you or, you know. But, you know, when I think back at it, and I think back on it rather, it's it was a lot of frustration, and a lot of anger that I had, and, and I think it it just resulted from you know like my, even my pops leaving and my mom struggling and you know movie theater was like three dollars. I'd be like, mom, let me get let me get some money to go to movie theater. I ain't got it. I'm like, you ain't got three dollars. Mm. <laughs> You know, so it's just is a lot. And then I got into the stealing and robbing part of it because I was frustrated. And then I was going down that road. And it is so much that, like I said, we don't never talk about. And um, so people don't really know. So it's going to be good to, like, really get that out and then people know a lot of behind the scenes. Even when we got into the business, the extortions and mm. all, the stuff, all the things that happened and people, you know, trying to just get over on you and do all kind of stuff. So. You know, and people don't really know about that. Like they just think we just got a deal and then made a couple million and then just kept going and it was all gravy. And it was like, nah, it was a lot of trials and tribulations through that that you know we didn't share with everybody. So a lot of people don't know. I can't wait to see it, and I hope everybody that's looking will will look at it. 
because it's going to be dope. I know it's going to be dope. Um, so let's move on to uh, top five, and then we're going to get up out of here with our shout outs, last words, and my final question, which is the question of the day. So I, I'm going to give you three questions instead of the top five, because I normally do five um, questions. So um, top five apparels in your company. Like what, what are your top, like your top five sellers, so to speak? Okay, so I want to say the football jersey is number one. Okay. You might have sold about 3.5 million of them alone. Um, the hats is number two. And let me see what else I can think of. Um, what else I can think of that was... Uh, Oh, the fatty, the fatty girl jeans. Okay. The fatty girl jeans was, you know, when we did the video for the fatty girl jeans, we sold a ton of them jeans. I think Everybody those, thought the, they had a fatty in them. <laughs> I'm gonna let you tell it. I ain't even gonna talk about it. <laughs> okay, okay. So you you have two more. If you don't have if you don't have two, that's fine. You said three. No, I said top five, but it's 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 cool. It's cool. It's cool. We're gonna do we're gonna do three. We, yeah, we, that's, we, that's, <laughs> I can't do it no more right now. I mean, I could throw stuff at you, but I won't be. You know. Yeah, we want everything to be authentic. You know, you ain't got to worry about it. Top five things you haven't done but want to do. Oh, uh, I want to race a Ferrari on the racetrack. You know, like go to one of those those uh those you know race tracks where they race the cars. Yes. I want to do that. I want to definitely jump out of an airplane. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I want to do that. Um, I want to. I want to. Like I, I've traveled. Uh, um, I've traveled many places, but I want to take like a like a all around the world type of thing. Like I want to go to like six months and just go from one place to the next and just do like this whole you know what I mean I want to do that um what else I want to um that'd <laughs> be funny with the, with the music <laughs> I was just trying to think I, I mean these are hard questions nobody ever asked me this before hey. um that's good. <laughs> yeah. If you don't have to, that's fine. We can we can move on. All right, all right, let's move on. Okay, so I... the final one is top five moments in your career. I'm sure you have five of those. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, my number one, I think for me was um meeting Nelson Mandela in his house in uh in uh South Africa. Um, number two was being invited to a, a brunch. I think it was, I think it was more like a dinner because it was like four o'clock, but a dinner with President Clinton. Mm. I was dropped in and a bunch of people. Like, I was like, wow, <laughs> we're actually in the building with the president of the United States at the time. Um, I know one one other one that's that's really amazing to me is one time we were in LA and um and we got out at the Soul Train, I mean at the um, BT Awards out the limo and they was like Fubu's here, <laughs> you know, because they announce you right. to the crowd before you get out. And we got out the car and people would like all these little girls yelling and screaming and shaking and crying and I'm like, what in the hell? Like that was the first time I ever even experienced anything like that. And then um let me see. And then also too, my wife just reminded me, she was like, Don't forget the Essence Award. Know, that great. was that was uh that was huge. Um the Essence Award, you know, was it was presented to the first the first company ever to get an Essence Award. It was always it was always individuals, never never a company. Mm. And the last one, uh, let me see. (laughs) (laughs) 
If you give me more two se- more than two seconds of silence, I'm. I'm oh, no, 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 no. You know what? It's um. <laughs> It's just, it's just so many. It's just so many. I'm trying to really. I think the day we got our deal, and moved into the Empire State Building, you know that was that was huge for us. You know, because um, you know it was so much work put put behind it, and then you know to actually see everything come to fruition, it was like wow, like we finally made it, guys. Like we here, and then um, you know it was like we don't have to struggle no more like right. we good like you know and and i think those i got more i just trying to remember the ones that i i think are the biggest but those those five are cool right there all right <clears throat> so now it's time to wind down which is our shout out social media final words and the question of the day so you can go ahead and give your shout outs um any last words that you have for our friends because once we do an interview together we're friends now um, and then your last words or social media. All right. Um, I want to give a shout out to my guys. Um, you know, just reaching this milestone of 30 years. I think that's that's a big, big thing. You know, um, most people ask us how how do we how do we stay together, but we've we've done it and we've been here 30 years, so that's a big accomplishment. Um, I like to shout out my food radio team. You know, they really hold me down and, 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 you know, we've been doing this for what, seven years now, minus the pandemic six years. So, but seven years we've been doing it. Um, and you know, we got a, a nice group, nice core team right now. So I always like to give them the props and, and shout them out. Um, and then, uh, who else? I'm gonna shout out my wifey for, <laughs> for for putting up with my my stanking ass for 26 years. Um, I think she's phenomenal, and she's uh, you know, we still have fun every day and, and laugh and joke with each other. You know, a lot of people went through a lot of things during the pandemic, and it was like psh, we was in here like yeah. you know, like it wasn't nothing. So, um, and then I know you said. What else you say after that? Social Your social media? media, yeah, where they can find you or follow you. Um, you can find me at Mr. Kizo, M R K E E Y Z O, um, on most platforms. I think uh, um, on Facebook is my name, Keith Perrin. Keith, Keith, K. I said Keith Perrin. <laughs> Keith, P E R R I N. Um, and then uh, and then um, I mean. The words that I would probably leave you, leave some some people with are, you know, just keep pushing. You know what I'm saying? Um, like nothing's gonna come to you easy. Is 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 just not, you know. <laughs> like sometimes when people get knocked down, they they stay down, you know, and you just gotta get up and brush it off and keep going and figure it out. And I think um a lot of times people give up before they really need to, you know what I mean? And um you know, educate yourself, you know, read more books. And I think this is, you know, I, I just went through a whole nother tipping point in my life right now. And I'm like, you know, cause I used to read a lot of books all the time and just to educate myself, then, you know, social media come out and then we on this social media all the time. And, you know, and then I'm running all these businesses trying to keep up with everything that I don't get a chance to, you know, I read certain things, articles and, 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 you know, things like that, but, just to sit down and just start getting back into reading books. So that's, that's my thing for the for the rest of the year is just getting back into my books and uh, you know, don't give up. Don't, don't, you know, nothing, nothing in life um, worth having is going to come easy. <laughs> it's not going to come easy. Right. You know, you just got to keep going and uh, you know, keep the faith and, 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 just you know the posit- the positivity and keep positive people around you you know that's I think that's the most important thing because you know even when we started, people were like, "Oh, you ain't gonna have no clothing company, oh you ain't gonna have this, and y'all ain't gonna have this, and yeah, you know it was just negative people, and then once we just got rid of those negative people around us and start putting some like minded people around us, then things started to turn out and um and 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 get a get a team that wants to see you win, you know if you've got a team you know get a team that wants to see you win because sometimes 
Everybody don't want to see you in, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you start you start shining or you start getting a little, you know, a little too much light on you and people start hating. So just get you a team that wants to see you win and then and then y'all, y'all win together. Big facts. Final question is the question of the day. What bothers you about the industry and what will be your solution to help fixing it? What bothers me about the industry? Yeah. Um which industry? <laughs> no. <laughs> I guess overall, because you can it's come from many No, I, I mean the the thing that I like that I hate, um, and I, I think this is my number one pet peeve. I just hate fake people. You know, I'm not I'm not a fake person. You know, if I know you, I know you, and I know that I I noticed that, you know, when we were the talk of the town. Everybody wanted to be your friend. You know what I'm saying? Everybody wanted to come holler at you. They wanted to call your phone and everything. But then when your light dims a little bit or or they may not see it anymore, then they act like they don't know you, you know? Um, I'll give you a, give you a, a I'm going to leave you with something. Um, and, and this is what I meant. Now, now Tyrese, I'm going to put him on Front Street right now because you know, I used to go to his uh, to his videos myself. I'd be in his trailer. I'd be talking to the dude. We he came to my office. We took pictures. Like we had, I thought we had a relationship. You know what I mean? I thought we were cool. And, and you, I don't got to go eat with you and you know kiss the babies and everything. But if we around each other and we have a business relationship, you know what I mean? It's, it's just what it is. So we're doing this um. They were doing this uh, premiere out in New York one day. And so he came, you know, he came through the door. I was standing right, like, right inside the door. So when he came through, I was like, yo, Ty was good. You know, I'm happy to see him. My man hit me with a head nod. <gasps> like, so usually I, you know, I, I'm the type of person, I'm going to say something. So I said, that's what we doing now? Then he came over and gave me a pound. But I, at that point, I just was like, wow, that's crazy. But he was with Reverend Run. Reverend Run, when, when he hit me with the head nod, Reverend Run walked directly to me, gave me love. And that's what I'm used to. Like, I'm not asking, hey, I ain't any ball five dollars. No, this, that, no. I'm not asking for nothing. Like, bro, just, hey, I see you acknowledge you, cool. You know, and, and at that point, I just was like, wow, I was like, Wow, man, people, you know, people change. So now that just taught me that, like, when I see people I know now, I, I don't get too excited because mm. I don't know how they going, how they, how, you know what I mean? If they, if, if we, we still cool like that, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, I might have a different perception about cool than right. you do. Right. But that was kind of like the, the, the one and only situation that I really went through because people realize that I'm, I'm a hundred percent genuine. So they, they fuck with me regardless. So that just threw me for a loop. Cause I was like, bro, I'm not asking for nothing in your pockets. I'm not, you know, I don't need nothing from you. And I think that's what I've always been. Like even anybody that tell you that any artist or any celebrity or whatever, I don't come around you. I don't ask you for nothing. I, you know, we together, I have my own, like I do everything. I, you know, I drive my own car, you know, I got my own this, I got my own that and, and whatever I need, I'm straight. I don't need nothing from you, you know? So I never, and, and I'm, and all my people know, I don't ask nobody for nothing. Like I don't, I'm not the type to ask you for anything. So that just kind of threw me for a loop. So I, I just been a little leery now because I just want to see who still really rock with me. Right. If you rock with me, I, I can tell the love. If not, then you, I'll see it om- automatically. So, you know, that was kind of one of those aha moments. <laughs> I was like, wow. That's when I kind of felt like, wow, like all the people you thought was cool with you are really not that, they was cool with you for a season, not a reason. You know what mm. I mean? So- Y'all heard it. 
Y'all heard it here first. Uh, it's So Hollywood, the podcast. But I appreciate you for sliding through. So Hollywood, the podcast appreciates you. Miss Hollywood, which is me, appreciates you. If you guys can follow me on Instagram, MISS Hollywood 313. Follow the podcast, So Hollywood, the podcast. Like, share, subscribe to this video. And there's, <clears throat> excuse me, if there's anything else that you would like to get off your chest, you can do so now. If not, we're going to get up out of here. And like I said before, I appreciate all of the things that you've done within this community with with just in general overall and just a brand and as a human being because this is what my platform is definitely for is to bring people together with this thing called entertainment and you are definitely appreciated so um make sure y'all like i said like share subscribe this video if there's anything else you can um drop it now but other than that we're gonna get up out of here thank you for having me thank Appreciate you time. Peace up, eight town down. To be a guest on So Hollywood the Podcast, just email So Hollywood the Podcast at gmail.com or follow me on Instagram, So Hollywood the Podcast and M I S S Hollywood 313.